On March 1st, the world lost one of the masters of sequential art in Akira Toriyama. A manga artist and character designer, he created many fantastical worlds and characters that entertained, motivated, and inspired a whole generation. From all walks of life, comic book artists, writers, animators, and other mangaka have expressed their grief and most importantly their gratitude for the late Akira Toriyama. So today on the channel, I thought I would pay tribute by chatting with you about one of my favorite stories he created for us. From the many one-shot and smaller creations like Dragon Boy, Gogo Akman, The Adventure of Tongpu, Lady Red, Koa, Kajika, Nekomajin, and many more, to the more worldwide smash hits like Dr. Slump, his designs in video games like Dragon Quest and Chrono Trigger, and the phenomena known as Dragon Ball, Toriyama's range covered a wide gamut of interesting genres with an art style that is easily recognizable by most worldwide. However, this video is not focusing on his life, his wonderful achievements, or the popularity of that one manga that became a global powerhouse. That talk will have to take place some other time. There's one manga, however, under the creator's bibliography that spent years since its inception as somewhat of an underappreciated gem. Created back in the year 2000, Sandland ran for 14 chapters in Weekly Shonen Jump and eventually was collected into one Tonkobon edition. This adventure comedy series mixes all of Toriyama's quirks we know and love, from the iconic art style to tropes that made us fans of his comedy, with the not-so-subtle themes of environmentalism, global warming, and, uh, oh yeah, the dangers of war. This quick-paced story was only meant to be for his own amusement, as per Toriyama's notes in the book. A short, simple manga about an old man and his tank, but the tank was harder to draw. Toriyama stubbornly insisted on drawing it all himself, and it eventually grew to become what Sandland is to this day. So what is this manga anyway? In the far future, war has destroyed the entire Earth, leaving only a barren wasteland where the supply of water is controlled by the greedy king. In search of a long-lost lake, Sheriff Rao asked the king of the demons for help and got the king's son, Beelzebub, and his assistant, Thief. Together, the unlikely trio sets off across the desert, facing monsters, bandits, and the deadliest foe of all, the king's army itself. The main trio of characters include Beelzebub, Prince of the Underworld, Son of Lucifer, usually referred to as Prince by his fellow demons. Beelzebub lives in relative harmony with the humans, although he regularly steals water from them. He only takes as much as he and his fellow demons need to survive. Joining Sheriff Rao in this journey gives him something to do, lending his enhanced sight and demonic strength to fight. There's also the character of Thief, an expert at stealing and one of the wisest of demons, supposedly. He is recruited by Beelzebub to accompany them in searching for water. And finally, the elderly man, Rao the Sheriff, who seeks to free the people of Sandland from the King's Pocket. This manga was and still is a ton of fun. There's something about a good action-adventure traveling story that still holds up to this day. Toriyama is able to lay the groundwork pretty quickly on this book, establishing the doomsday scenario of a waterless earth, not so subtly telling the readers of the dangers of war and miscarrying for the environment. In this world, humans are barely hanging on, and what little remains is being controlled by a king with a government that is monopolizing the little water that's left. This world also has different creatures and demons that are struggling to acquire water as well. One of the funnier ironies for me in this book is the fact that humans are the ones that are looking down on demons and would do anything to get rid of them or run away. Yet it's those very demons that want to keep the balance by not stealing all their water as the humans provide good entertainment for them. Under these circumstances, we meet our main trio. Rao, the human, is a noble individual with an undisclosed past. 
lost. He's the sheriff of a town and has promised his people that he will find the fabled lake of water. To do so, he will set any differences aside and look towards getting help from the demons as his own leadership is not to be trusted. Lucifer can't be bothered to deal with the lone request of a man, so the prince of demons, Beelzebub, is up to the task of helping Rao. He's a young brat, or old by demon standards, with a great latent power and a hunger for adventure. He decides to accept Rao's request, and alongside him, the old demon thief joins the search for water. An unorthodox cast for sure, but one that perfectly represents the themes of coming together for the greater good and the promise of an oasis in the scorching sandland. The majority of the story is quick paced as I mentioned before, most of the chapters are spent on the road as the trio travel in Rao's car and later commandeer an army's tank for their own. The villains of this story are the king and his army. Somewhat dim-witted but mostly Machiavellian in nature, they represent the worst of humanity as they twist their narrative to justify their actions for hoarding and monopolizing the water. As they learn of Rao's quest and the hijacking of one of their vehicles, the king orders them to to be stopped at all costs, which sets in motion the third act of the story. I won't reveal all of Sandland's secrets, but I can tell you my thoughts on the book and why I think it is one of Toriyama's most underrated works. In Dr. Slump, Akira Toriyama worked on his humor. Crude, lowbrow at times, quite silly, and endearing for some. In Dragon Ball, he fine-tuned the comedic aspect of the manga storytelling while perfecting the tension, build-up, and resolution of a fighting series. Not to mention the choreography of shonen fights as well. In Sandland, we see all these elements blend together to create a fine-tuned machine that doesn't tilt or balance one way over the other. It remains a solid, tight, concise, fun adventure all throughout. There's a great mix of silly humor, dramatic storytelling, and fun combat fighting to keep the reader engaged. Last but not least, artistically, Sandland is also a home run. Years of perfecting his craft, you see the whimsy and care that Toriyama puts to his characters. They are all brimming with personalities as only he could do it. The world may be a barren wasteland, but there's a lot of fine detail in the vehicles, creatures, humans, and demons. Easy to look at, but difficult to master. Something only Toriyama could pull off. Unfortunately, there is a mentality with the mainstream crowd that Akira Toriyama was only responsible for creating Dragon Ball and helping out with video games like Dragon Quest and Chrono Trigger. And yet, here we are completely disregarding his many other fantastic creations. But fortunately, in 2024, we haven't forgotten. The manga was released in English by Viz Media back in 2003 to small fanfare compared to the huge juggernauts that Viz publishes like Dragon Ball, One Piece, Bleach, or Naruto. Since then, it always remained just another one of the author's wacky creations until the year 2022 when the Sandland project began and eventually it revealed a full-length animated film adaptation produced by Sunrise, Kamikaze Doga, and Anima. Released in August of 2023, the film went on to gross worldwide over $2 million. The Sandland film reintroduced the story to a new audience and months later, said film would be reworked as a 13-episode original net animation series called Sandland the Series, which streamed worldwide on Disney Plus and Hulu in March of 2024. The first six episodes retell the story of the film with new scenes added in, while the final seven episodes introduced a brand new story subtitled The Story of the Angel Hero, which Toriyama himself wrote for the ONA as well as designed the new characters introduced. The original Sandland project back in 2022 also revealed a video game was in the works. Sandland the video game would be officially revealed in June of 2023, developed by Ilka and published by Bandai Namco Entertainment for PlayStation, Xbox, and Windows. This action role-playing game would also be based on the original manga, placing Beelzebub as the game's main playable character from a third-person perspective. 
You can fight various enemies and creatures while completing the plot of the game, while also exploring new sections of Sandland which were plotted and designed by Akira Toriyama himself as well. It includes two modes of melee combat, unlockable skills and abilities, and yes, the vehicles are there as well, from hover cars, bikes, mech suits, and the famous tank. These vehicles can all be customized and used to roam and explore a much bigger Sandland than what was presented in the original story. You can also participate in other activities like racing, bounty hunting, and battle arenas. If you've never read Toriyama's material, give this one a shot. There's a lot of fun to be had. People are now realizing there is more to this legendary mangaka than the huge hit of a property that is Dragon Ball Z and all its spin-offs. Something like Sandland can also have its moment in the spotlight and still be triumphant. Back in 2003, we only had that one book, but fast forward to the present and there is now a wider gap of things to choose from. Anime, manga, film, video game, and let's not even talk about the avalanche of upcoming figures. For me, Sandland is a book of perseverance, of setting your differences aside for the greater good, a story of working with your fellow man or demon to accomplish spectacular things, but also to remind us that our beautiful earth should be treasured for it's the only home we will ever know.